I just thought of an interesting perspective that I don't know why I thought about when we were talking about <laughs> Daniel Hunter and uh, you guys were talking about uh, people were saying it was bad and all this stuff. Do you think professional athletes should be forced to be like the celebrity status that they are? That makes any as sense. Forces like, in like if you're an actor or a musician or anything, that your job is to entertain people, right? Where this sport, people growing up, their their whole thing isn't like, oh, I'm gonna go put on a performance. They just want to play the sport, and then you reach the professional level, and it, your job is now to entertain these people, not just this. <clears throat> so you do have to have like the fan interactions. You do have to have this, and if you don't like your job and you want to work somewhere else, you piss off everyone that's fan of that team. And it's like, it's almost seems unfair because they're like, I just wanted to play football and I don't like where I'm at, but now I have a million people saying I'm a piece of shit because I don't want to play for this team anymore. And I also think fundamental football can be boring. Like watching Patrick Mahomes is a lot more fun to watch than somebody who's far more systematic. Like Peyton Manning, for instance. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, just their play style. Peyton Manning is a little bit different. He's HOF, but like Kirk Cousins is, well, Patrick He's, Mahomes is HOF too. Not yet. According to Madden 22. If Patrick <laughs> Mahomes retired today, he'd be a borderline Hall of Famer. No, I just, I, it's I way disagree. too soon. All right, yeah, we won't go down that road soon. yet. We'll wait I, I'm just saying year. there's plenty of players that are more systematic. They're good at their position, but they're not flashy as far as namesake. Where the flashy players are where you're getting a lot of your... Like Josh Allen, is he the most fundamental football player? No, definitely not. Is Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson? No, no, but they're flashy. They're the next guy stepping up in the league. They're fun to watch. Now you're going to get some guys like, and Aaron Rodgers is a little bit different because he's kind of flashy too, but there's different positions are a little bit easier to say it. Maybe like running backs and stuff. There's Mm -hmm. guys who can run between the tackles, do their job, get four or five yards that might not bust you the 75 yard touchdown, but that 75 yard touchdown by cook is going to be a hell of a lot more fun than watching, 16 rushes for five yards. You know what I mean? Getting your first downs. Well, okay. That's why there's scoring. That's why there's, that's why there's an argument generally by Vikings fans for best receiver of all time. A lot of people will say Moss over rice because Moss was super freak rice by every single at rice by every single thing that makes any sense at all. It should be the best receiver of all time. Some people say Moss because he was more fun to watch. Lamar Jackson is one of the most fundamental quarterbacks at running back, though. Who said that? Devin. Oh. <laughs> uh, this guy gets it. I was going to say, though, <laughs> like, gets it. like to piggyback off of Star, to take it a step farther, professional sports, specifically we'll talk NFL, is the only thing in the world where if you're the best at your uh, relative position in college, you have a higher chance of going to one of the worst organizations in the NFL. Yeah which is about the only profession in the entire world that that's the case in is professional sports. And even moreover, you don't get the pick. You just get to go to this Trevor Lawrence. You're going to Jacksonville shithole Jacksonville. Good luck. And you might be stuck there for four or five years, five years. If you're one of the top picks. Yeah. And then you get franchise tags and then you get shit on by fans who say that you've never won anything. When in reality, you went to a really shitty situation. I'm not saying Trevor Lawrence isn't going to win anything in Jacksonville, but it's happened in the past where good players have gone to bad situations and not won. And that you have a shitty job. Not you have a shitty job. Yeah. If you have a shitty job, you can leave. You might piss your boss off, but you're not pissing off all of these people who you didn't even choose to be like, love me, love me. You're not one of these showboating people. You just happen to be really good at football and you're there and you just don't like your situation. But it's immediately looked at negative as far as social medias and Instagram and everything when a player has any disgruntledness with their team. When in reality, they could just be like, I, like, I didn't sign up for this. Like, I'm good at this sport. I deserve to make more money. And now I'm being called selfish because I do deserve to make more money. Xavier Howard on Miami Dolphins has been sitting out because they are paying the guy they signed last year, Byron Jones, Byron Jones, more money. Xavier Howard outplayed him in every aspect of the game last year, 10 times the player as him. But everyone's like, you signed the contract. It's like, well, yeah, but now he deserves more money. Yeah, well, especially in that situation, you're paying a cornerback more because he was a free agent and I wasn't, and that's what you had to pay to get him when I'm really the better player than him. I'd be sitting out too. It's like Aaron Rodgers. He wants out of Green Bay because he wants to go win a Super Bowl, and he doesn't believe Green Bay wants to do that. Yeah, I don't know. Just in my... 
I'm like starting to switch onto more of the player side than the team side when I all these too. contract disputes are coming up. The thing is, though, there are situations where it doesn't. Some situations it's easier to pick the player side than others, I guess is what I would say. Yeah. Like when Brady wanted out of New England at that time, it kind of made sense. They had had their run. The Patriots roster was really bad. Tom Brady's contract was coming up. It's a little different because he didn't have to force his way out. He just played out his contract, went and went somewhere else. But certain players to get disgruntled at a franchise, because like Deshaun Watson, for instance, I'm not surprised that Deshaun Watson demanded a trade. It's a shitty organization, and they traded away all of his teammates that he liked for nothing. And now he sits around in his prime to maybe break even, yeah. not really have a chance at a Super Bowl. and he's- Or to have a successful season, yeah. which would be to make the playoffs and get bounced in the first round. Yeah. Things change as the years goes on. I mean, the contract for Daniel Hunter when he signed it for him. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes you look at it like maybe you should have signed a one or two year deal. And then in a couple of years, you could have made more money. And sometimes it's like, well, I mean, he is out playing his contract or he was when he was healthy. Does he deserve more money? Is he one of the top seven DNs in the league? I'd say so. Well, but he's not of, getting paid that way. Yeah. But he was also getting paid like a top seven defensive end when he was a top 30 defensive end. That Yeah. So for him, it's like, but then for instance, Kirk too, fans get mad at Kirk Cousins because he got a big contract from us. Well, he risked his he risked getting a good contract for two years playing on a franchise tag, and it worked out for him. He could have easily gotten injured and been paid about probably fourteen or fifteen million a year. He didn't risk. That. Yeah, <laughs> the Redskins risked that. Yeah. Well, he had to sign the contract. Or it was that or not play. Yeah, those are so, his options. Yeah, but he was a lot of risk on Kirk Cousins' part. Well, it was nineteen million dollar risk if he didn't play, and then I mean, getting injured paid. was the only risk. He had paid way more than 19 mil on the take, right? No, but Brandon saying yeah, that yeah, if he would have got her, yeah. it was a 19 like million dollar difference. 35 mil. It was about a 19 million dollar difference, though. Yeah, that's what I was saying. 16 to 35, that's 19 mil. <clears throat> You're saying he played on the tag for 16 mil? No, no, no. All I'm saying is Brandon said 19, but I thought he was saying that he could play for 35, get hurt, and now yeah. he's getting paid 16. <laughs> but I don't exactly I think I'm bailing Brandon saying. out here. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think his, his first tag was relatively in like the 19, 20 range. The second tag was upwards of 30. But it, he didn't really have a choice because it's a difference of making 20 million or sitting out and then signing a team. But sitting out is a bad look for other teams. Yeah. Because they're going, well, do Does we he- want him? He's sitting out on his team. I think the franchise tag rule is stupid. If you play out your contract, you should be able to leave. When like, it shouldn't be able to like, nope, we're saving you. <laughs> First year was 22 and a half. Second year was 27 and a half. Okay. But get this though, for a kicker, the fact that he's now been franchise tag twice in his career follows him wherever he goes. So no, Kirk cousins is a quarterback. So if he were, ah. so if he were now to get franchised by the Vikings after we pay him 40, his number would be like 60, 60 million dollars on a franchise tag because it goes up like, one hundred and fifty percent, rather of than one hundred value. Yeah, of the top five. Yeah, it's like it, the no. But and does it? Does it? It's an escalator too, though. It transfers with teams. It does. Yes. So he will never be franchise tagged again. Definitely There's not a not. chance. Right. That's insane. But that's honestly that's about the difference between the NFL and the NBA. To be honest with you, is the franchise tag. 